Sporters, are you looking for a new pair of shoes that are cute, comfortable, and can be worn every day? Finding your new go-to pair is now easier than ever with Rothy's. Their shoes give you right-out-of-the-box comfort, come in amazing styles and colorways, and, hey, you can wash them. It's a new age, people! And the best part is everything Rothy's makes is better for the planet. So there you go. They've repurposed millions of water bottles into their signature thread that goes into every single one of their products. Millions of women wear Rothy's shoes every single day. And I'm definitely one of them. They're so comfortable. I wear my Rothy's every day. And I'm Asian. I'm not supposed to wear them in the house. But you can't tell me what to do. It's my house. Did you know that for People's Magazine's first ever style awards, they awarded best flat to one of Rothy's styles? When I tell you these things are comfortable, I mean, I cannot overstate it. All right, so step up your shoes and accessories this spring and get ready to be asked, hey, are those Rothy's? Plus, get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash add to cart. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash add to cart. Oh, so with that fire, boy. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Add to Cart, a show about the things we buy and buy into and what they say about who we are. I am Kulap Vilaisak. And I'm Sujan Pak. Well, this is our final episode in the spotlight, and boy, has it been bright. I feel more alive. You know, Mm -hmm. I feel like I've got some color. I just, it was such a delightful month, and we're so happy to have so many new listeners Um, Thank you to Apple Podcasts. Thank you to all of you guys. Thank you to all of you guys who rated and reviewed and subscribed. I mean, it's just made such a big difference. And I don't know, I just feel very, very humbled and and grateful and just kind of also special. You know, can I just, can I say that? I feel just. I I like that you feel special. It's about dang time award winning veteran journalist Suchin (laughs) Pak. And this week, we will be talking about our best summer add to carts. And that's right, our sizzling selects for the summer. And then we have labor organizer turned comedian, actor, and writer Jenny Yang. All of her hilarious stories and practical add to carts. It's a fantastic conversation. So let's get into it. Summer. Summertime. Suchin, I'm going to start with a game changer for me. (gasps) Ooh. Now, we have talked quite a bit on this podcast about sunblock. Oh, yeah. A lot. So much. So much. I'm like, not only have we talked about it, you and I have separate threads about it. Mm -hmm. Is that Mm -hmm. unusual? I feel like during this time of us all quarantined and in our homes, we were just walking more and outdoors more and spending more time outdoors. So I feel like it's just everybody's sunblock crazy. So much sunblock. I'm trying uh, uh, past gas ideas. I'm doing all of it. <laughs> but I still come back to this product, Suchan. Yeah. And this product is the Neogen Dermology yeah. Daylight Protection Airy Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 50. It just it doesn't feel like sunblock. It's light. It's effective. Um, I first was introduced to it by uh, Soko Glam, like my go-to place if I want to get Korean skincare. But now I get it wherever I can get it because it it often sells out. Um, But have you tried this yet, Sujin? No, I don't. See, the thing, I'm not used to wearing sunblock that I can't actually feel. Isn't that, like I get paranoid all day long. I'm like reapplying with my powder, my sunscreen powder, because I just I'm so used to having the mineral sunblock, which is a it, which is a very different type of sunblock. So what is it about this one that's so different? It's the lightness of it. It doesn't mm-hmm. it feels like it's a a light moisturizer. It's got no scent. There's yeah. no white cast. There's none of that. Yeah. To me, it's like, of course, Sujan, I know your habits. You would put this on as a base and then you would put your powder afterwards that's right oh i mean that's what would happen um (laughs) and it seems so crazy the intimacy the intimacy that we have here on this podcast how you hold me in such such honest lighted also it seems excessive (laughs) to put on two different types of 
sunblock and two different types of textures. And yet we, you know, we've got guys, we've got a sleep episode on its way at some point, a sleep routine episode and coming off of what you guys already know from our shower episodes, excessive seems not to be a problem for us, which still is even though I practice it, confounding. You know, the thing with sunscreen, now that you say it, I I was like, I wonder what the root of this is. I mean, there's many roots, but one of them is is my, I don't know, my obsession, my weakness, where I think everything is a scam. Yeah. And so I put this lightweight on and I'm like, well, this doesn't feel like I have anything on. I, it's not killing the joy of my skincare routine. How do I know? How do I know I'm protected? Yeah. So then I slather myself with the powder. It's, it's a trust issue for me, I'm realizing. Yes. I have a hard time trusting. But here's the thing. I You know that I have phenomenal skin. <laughs> Everybody does. Please, this you is know. not a secret. <laughs> I hold on my own. I'm not going to pretend I've opened myself up during this time of Adzakar to see what other people are up to. And I'm coming back to this game changer, guys. All right. Okay. Okay. Coming back. And by the way, it's on sale, 2560 for 50 milliliters. That's the other thing that always, when I see a sunblock that's so expensive, I'm like, no, I don't want it to be so expensive because I want to slather it on yeah. all day, yeah. head to toe. No, so Suchin, I I feel like you have a game changer to start us off. I do have a game changer. And again, this was a last minute game changer this morning. I said, what have I been doing? So, yes, we've talked about glass teeth. From Casey St. Ange, yes. You know, what do we mean by that texture? We we, we mean that it's smooth, that it's porcelain-like. There's a finish to it that is durable, yet also delicate. Mm. Okay, glass teeth, all right? Well, I don't, uh, let's break it up. I don't think anyone wants to hear that their teeth are delicate. Well, sure, 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 sure. (laughs) Delicate, not in strength, but perhaps in texture. You know, Ah, just in that ah. finish. Refined. Refined. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's really what I'm looking for. That smooth. Brand new. Squirt in the end. You know, just. (laughs) You have become so disgusting because of my influence. And it's a joy to watch and to experience what I really am liking it, it's not just with words, but it's it's gestures, which our listeners are really missing out. I'm trying new things out, and I'm, I love I'm it. having I love a it. lot of fun. Uh, Good! I, Yay! It really <laughs> it's all I want. <laughs> it's just this time with you, two hours a week, I just let my, I put my fun cape on. You know, I just tie it around. You let your hair down. I, I tie it around my top button. And I say, have fun. Yes. Okay? Remember to have fun. Yes. So we talked about glass teeth. I am now going to introduce you to glass hair. Yes. Wow. Okay. Wow. Uh, this is called, I'm going to mispronounce it. Okay. It's Infenom Hair Treatment. I think that's right. Okay. It is made in Japan. Uh, may we? Uh, and it is a shampoo and a conditioner. The conditioner is called a hair treatment. And let me give you some of the things it promises. This is how I would describe it as having used it. Have you ever had like a Japanese hair straightening treatment? I haven't. So I have had that. And it, it's pretty intense. You know, I mean, I think you have to have a certain type of hair texture because for a while I looked like an oily sea otter. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it was two weeks really? of, of mild panic because it's not cheap. And I was like, huh, all righty. It just so was like, like, it like, it like straightened, like, but it was up against your head. Yeah. And just like okay. flat and oh. flat. And, oh. and the woman who said it to me was like, don't worry. When you wash your, it'll come back. You know what I mean? It's not, it, it, it changes the texture of your hair. For three months, I had the best hair of my life. Whoa. I had the kind of hair that you wake up and you're like... Ready to go. uh, Ready for photo shoots. You know what I mean? Like, go ahead. Get out the the Nikon, the Canons. Get out whatever cameras you have because I'm ready for the photo. I mean, it was a photo finish hair. Like, But it's expensive. So I went on a trip with my girlfriend who has 
long hair. And it looks like there's tree. I was like, so how often do you get your hair straightened? And she was like, oh, I don't get that treatment. And I was like, that's not your hair, normal hair texture. That's something. And she's like, no, you have to use this hair treatment. But it is as close to that feeling Whoa. of a Japanese straightening hair treatment as I've ever gotten in a just a shampoo and a conditioner. And immediately I walked out of the shower and I was like, my hair weighs differently. Now, off mic, when we logged into our Zoom, what was the first thing I said? Oh, oh, you did say something about my hair, did you not? I did. Yeah. It did. It looked lustrious. My hair does look phenomenal. It Thank does. You. It truly does. In In phenom. In phenom. In phenom. Now, I was going to jump to my next at Descartes, but I looked ahead and I'm going to have to go straight back to you, friend. You, you're going to add to cart, but you're not adding to cart a swimsuit? Please explain. You're not allowed to look ahead. <laughs> we know that I, yes, jump in a pool in my underwear and my bra. And guess what, guys? I'm here to tell you from the other side. Nothing's different. Yeah, I know. We've heard you say that. There's some things that are different. But I used to buy swimsuits. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if I were to buy a swimsuit... I would buy it from the place that I always bought my swimsuits. So go ahead and click on the first link. Okay. These people will not steer you wrong. You pronounce it C, but it's spelled S-E-E-A. And they do all different kinds of swimsuits, mainly for active people in the water. This is what is funny is that you are neither active on land or in the water. Right. And what you have filling my eyes right now is a... Nazar bodysuit and it's a mm. woman who is very muscular. She she's surfing and she is battling a wave. Yeah. Right now. But she needs a suit. You know what I mean? To make sure that she battles this wave like a warrior, like the warrior that she is, okay? I mean, it it is amazing. It's a streamlined dancer's cat suit. It is <laughs> for your quote balletic footwork in the waves. That's right. It is a one piece that goes from your breastbone all the way to your ankle, okay? And you can go surfing, paddling, or what does it say here? Yoga. I believe that's a dry sport. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. When's the last time you did yoga? Tell me when you did yoga the last time. I can't tell you. But what I can tell you is yoga is done on dry land. Guess what else is done on dry land? Underwearing and braing. No uh, one's arguing listen, that point. Laying out a theoretical basis here. Okay? Okay. Okay. All so, right. So this one I picked because really with you in mind. Really? <laughs> or with folks like you who don't mind showing a little bit of skin. Now they have I, I was a body going to suit. Say, I was they have a bodysuit in navy that it does not have the back cut out like this. Okay. This one has the back cut out, so you can still feel like Gidget the Sea Goddess. Gidget? What in the world is a Gidget? It's a girl, a cuddling, befuddling teen, who set out to find her a man of her own and found seven. Seven young beachcombers <laughs> with a single thought. This is my swimsuit references. They go back to 1948. So this is a version of a swimsuit that I could wear and feel all the things I want to feel when I'm in a swimsuit. I feel. Can I buy this for you? (laughs) Will you let me buy this for you? I don't need it. It's not about need. No, I don't need it. If I buy this, will you wear it? (laughs) Come on. No, cool up, please. I have your go address. To the, go you to extra the, small or small. Go to the second. Go to the second link. They okay. also have you guys. Have you ever swam in leggings? <laughs> You've never okay. swam in leggings. No, I haven't. <laughs> what? <laughs> Swim leggings are the best. Listen, guys, uh, quickly before she launches, um, <laughs> I know that she's ramping up to something. This woman who I'm looking at. She she's athletic. She it's sun protection for water sports. Now, Suchin Pak, I don't recall hearing any sort of water sports 
that you're participating in. I don't know, uh, even though you do live in Santa Barbara, you know, I've never heard you say, I'm going to get on a jet ski or I need to worry about the coral upon my legs. My swimming pool is kept at a very, very cool temperature of 92 degrees at all times. (laughs) It's so hot that the pool cleaner came back the next day and said, I have not seen this kind of bacterial growth in your swimming pool. And it's because it is as hot as most people keep hot tubs, jacuzzi, hot tubs. And you have to turn down Mm -hmm. the temperature for this chlorine to work. I haven't been in since, but the pool is cooler. And if I were to go in, I would go in leggings. I I don't like a draft. And water is just a submerged draft on every surface of my skin. You've heard it here, folks. Water is a submerged draft. Yes. The new biography memoir by (laughs) Suchin Pak. Water is a submerged draft. No, Sujin. Yes, um, your dirt. I, I have some pool-related stuff. Okay, things that can happen near a pool. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is the Lana floating seat. This is a a seat for your pool. This is cool. It is a quick drying mesh seat that has a fabric border for optimal comfort and is stitched with a eight and a half diameter noodle for extra cushion, buoyancy, and durability. The fabric is marine grade Sunbrella fabrics. Um, and then it's filled with mold and mildew resistant foam beads. It's the chillest. It's a chill seat in the pool. Recommend it. I get it at front gate. Right now it's on sale and it's on sale for $109. You guys, also just all of the Lana water toys. You know what I mean? Like they yes. have a water hammock. That's interesting. I-, I used to get inflatables. And the thing about inflatables is that they puncture, right? So cheap. Yeah, and you use them so cheap for one summer. And then you're like, okay, I got to replace all this stuff. And like that mold resistant thing, that's interesting to me. That they're filled with glass beads. Because that's when you know that this is like quality. You're going to have this for a while. I've had this for two seasons now. Looks still as good as new. Um, this and is great. G- I'm interested in things that last. And this guy yeah. lasts. So uh, this, is a, this is a big recommend. See, that's the kind of water sports. I'm. This is see this lady lounging. It's not, it's not, she's, it's not a sport. she's lounging. Yeah, because guess no, what? She, said- has to, she has to kick her feet from the edge of the pool. Does she not? But it's Does in the not? name. You said lounge. Yes, that's right. All right. Sure. Um, the other thing that I want to recommend is a projector screen with a stand. And if you hit that link, Suchin, it's an yeah. outdoor, indoor, foldable, anti-crease projector screen. Oh. And while my family was in town, we broke this out for the first time with a projector and played a movie outside and the screen set is only $218. Um, the screen is 135 inches. That's pretty big. Also, last week, Jason Manzukis came over and we watched the finale of Disney Plus's Loki. Great picture. Gorgeous. Looks amazing. Looks amazing. Um, and re- really easy to take up and down. And it has a case. And you just throw it in your garage. Yeah. And since, unfortunately, the numbers have gone up, in Los Angeles, and we there is a mask mandate once again to wear masks inside. I shan't be going to a movie theater until those numbers trend down. We're definitely going to get a lot of uh, use out of this projector. Um, okay, what's your next add to cart? Okay, so my next add to cart, and this one, it's a summer add to cart for sure, but it's a little bit of a stretch. It's just <laughs> that first link. Go to Cabbages and Kings, um, which is just the cutest kids brand. I've loved them for years and years and years. And it's a mama, you know, she's got four kids. She does this. And she just launched these um, summer tote bags. 
and they're matching. So you get the big one and then your kid gets the small one. Oh, and so cute. They're, they're so sturdy. They come in so many different colors. Um, I've been using it all summer. They're It's huge. And so some, you know, a lot of times... It just the size and the durability of a summer beach tote is so important. And then they have this little mini me summer tote. Now, I am not the type of person who will dress my child up in (laughs) matching clothes, but she has taken to this thing and she takes it around and it, and she puts her sunblock stick in it. And then she puts all of her toys in it. And when we walk out, Onto the beach in matching (laughs) summer nylon totes. I love it. I'm tearing up right now. I'm tearing up right now. I, it was, it's so freaking cute. I can't even stand myself. And I um, love it so much. It's it's such a cute uh, gift idea. It's such a cute idea for your kids. I just think it's great whenever you can encourage children to be a bit more independent, to take, you know, ownership of their own stuff is always great. But this match, it killed me. Plus, it's so durable. It's a great brand overall. I think it's a smaller brand. I, I just, I love talking about this woman's, uh, you know, what she stands for. And, and she just, everything she does is really high quality and just gorgeous. So that's been our summer tote situation. That's been so fun. I'm getting it for <laughs> past gas Lauren Lapkus. This like screams oh. Lauren Lapkus to me. I mean, it's premature for her <laughs> baby, but still, I know she's going to love it. So <sighs> I'm getting it. I added I added to cart already oh. while you were talking. Everything will fit in there. Towels, toys, you know, umbrellas, whatever it is. So that's it. Okay, your turn. Really quickly, I want to recommend to everybody uh, to watch season two of I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson. It's on Netflix. Tim Robinson is a hilarious actor, sketch performer, performer in general. You may remember him from Saturday Night Live. He also had a equally hilarious and gone too soon Comedy Central series called Detroiters, which uh, if you haven't seen, definitely add to cart as well. But season two is out. Me and Scott were dying laughing. We watched the entire season in like one sitting. He just he look makes at the guest cry. stars on this. Steven Young? That's from that season true? one. Oh, season that's one. from season one. Yeah. Well, I'll have to start with season one. Oh, it's so, so funny. That's what I want to watch right now. It's summer. You just want to laugh. The title it really gives you a sense of like a lot of characters that Tim does are people that you would say, I think you should leave. In today's climate, something you've said or done in the past can cause you to be fired from your place of work. Don't let something you've said or done get you undeservedly fired from your position. We all make mistakes. We shouldn't be punished for them. I was fired from work for something completely embarrassing. I was fired for something extremely embarrassing. I'm not going to say what it was, but it led me to invent this powerful hot dog vacuum. People say to me, what inspired you to invent this? And I say, I cannot talk about it without crying. Genius. He's so hilarious. He's a genius. He truly is a genius. Um, And so my final uh, add to cart is something that Scott bought from somewhere at Universal City Walk when he went with my family. But here it is online, Suchin. It is a alcohol shotgun. What the heck is that? Well, oh, I thought you meant for your hand sanitizers. You you know, al- uh, hand sanitizer has alcohol in it. Um, this you're going to take to the mouth. <laughs> this okay. is... So so you load your favorite hey, alcohol, you listen. aim, shoot, and drink. It's a shot party what? accessory. It holds up to 1.5 ounces. When you shoot it out, it like, is it just... What's is it funnier? I mean, like, what is the thing that makes us so great at a party? Okay, this is slow mo. I'm showing yeah. Sujin a slow mo video from my nephew's birthday. Oh, oh, it's your little sister shooting you in the mouth, like at her with face. A, with it, <laughs> she's never been more delighted. My middle sister Anita is giving me a shot of Casamigos tequila right to the mouth. <laughs> now the force of it is stronger than you'd expect. <laughs> 
It's shocking. It hits you at the back of the throat. My brother-in-law saw that and still said, let me do it to myself. Now, I don't have that video ready for you, but he did it at such short range. <laughs> he... <laughs> he... I mean, it, I don't know it if came any... came out of his it, nose? I, it, I don't think any ended up in his mouth. Like, the shock of it hitting the back of his throat and it coming out and him coughing, it was so funny. And then it escalated. My friend Sang, who is a chef... He's not a big drinker, um, and he was like, I'll do it if it's filled with badak. And badak is unfiltered fish sauce. It's a thick, pungent, brown liquid. And it's stinky, which makes papaya salads and lab really dimensional and tasty. But rarely do you take it as a shot. To the back of the throat. (laughs) To the back of the throat. So Anita, we started calling her the executioner. We filled that shot glass. (laughs) <laughs> with stinky fish sauce and we and he like one two three scream i love fish sauce knocked it down but we weren't done we weren't done the last thing we did sang agreed that he would take siracha the same way hot sauce guys he said he would take a shot of hot sauce i do have one inflatable float that is siracha inspired we put him on that float we counted three two one and then anita my sister shot him directly in the chin and it basically went down his body and there was splatter on his thighs and it looked like it was a massacre (laughs) oh this is hours and hours of fun oh i love it i love this high stakes game that you and scott always (laughs) I, I do feel like it. Both of you guys are so um, down for this. That's great. It's so dumb. yay, yay, yay! That looks like so much fun. I can see why you were bummed when your family left. Guys, that text made me so sad. I was like, oh, mm. I'm. What is this? Oh, <laughs> I'm really depressed that my family <laughs> left. I'm so bummed out. I'm still bummed out, and it's been days. This is what you did. You made it too fun. And now you're sad. And that's why I always like to have a low to medium fun flame so that when it's gone, I I nod to it being gone. And then I move on in my sadness, just like every other day. What a way to end our summer episode, Tuchin Park. There's a a bathing suit for everyone, right? Right? Raikou? Raikou? Well, you're going to get one soon. Suchin Pak, please welcome to our show. Oh my, I'm so excited. Hold on. I gotta I gotta dial it down <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Your heart. My heart. Your heart. You gotta oh got be careful. <laughs> oh my god. I am that, uh, that guayaki organic yerba mate sparkling grape. You gotta ginger. cut it. Woo. I saw you drinking it full strength from the can. Oh my god. We're not young ones. No, Kula. we're not. No, we're not. But no. you know who is young? <laughs> our guest coming forth. Please welcome fresh, fresh and former labor organizer turned stand up comedian, writer and actor. What is that? How many threats is that? I don't know. (laughs) In 2020, she was selected as one of Variety's 10 comics to watch and Vulture's comedians. You should know and you should know her. She's currently a writer for HBO Max's Gordita Chronicles. She is the creator and host of Comedy Crossing, a hit stand-up comedy show held inside the Animal Crossing video game and watched live via Zoom. And since June 2020, well within the quar, the show has raised nearly $40,000 for Black Lives Matter-related causes. Please add to cart Jenny! Yay! I'm here. Thank you. That was an incredible introduction. Well, you're an incredible person. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. Jenny... We like to ask our guests, what what type of shopper are you? Mm, mm. Mm. I am a mm. practical shopper. Practical. Except when I'm bored. Like it, This is what happens. <laughs> I'm uh-huh. very practical and I enjoy it. Like I enjoy um, utility shopping. You know, I love gear. 
right? If I'm doing a new endeavor, I want all the doohickeys. I want to see what the people need, right? Uh The moment I was like, I want to like invest in like a camera kit and audio. That was a whole process. Mm. Um, I got really into, you know, making cocktails over the quarantine, like a lot of people, Mm. some fancy barista style coffee drinks. So I, you know, I'm out here looking at all the little doohickeys. Okay. Do I want a stirrer? Do I want a coupe glass (laughs) versus an etched antique looking glass oh, you know what I'm saying like there's just uh, we're, wow this is how the I details. think yeah so other if that's how that's like my immigrant cheap way of justifying a purchase and a set of purchases because to me I'm like oh it's for something it's like truly mm. for something you know during the pandy you also you got into making homemade pasta I did Oh, yes. I love cooking. And I had this um, motorized pasta cutter thingy just sitting in my storage a few months before the pandemic. And in my head, I was like, okay, around March is when my writer's room is going to end. And that's when I'm just going to like be chill, work on my own stuff and like make pasta like a like a sultry fucking European bitch, you know, like just luscious noodles with butter Mm. and Parmesan. Just, you know what I mean? That's all you need. Just salt and pepper. Like, you know, I want to be one of those people. (laughs) Yes, Tuscan sun. Okay. (laughs) Like, you know, it's like this, this, it's this life of opulence that I I, I wanted to live. And so um, when it just so happened that the pandemic occurred around the time that I was done with work, I was like, well, I guess this is it. It feels a little more depressing than this sultry (laughs) under the Tuscan sun vision. You know, it felt more like sure. a survival. It felt like lemonade. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's right. You just got to make lemon. Mm-hmm. You just add more sugar. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. a little bit. It's a little bit bitter. It's a little bit tartar mm-hmm. than you wanted. Yeah, you just add more sugar. It was right. before. Before I was gonna like do it like it's a vacation. But when the pandemic hit, I was making fresh pasta, like white knuckling it. You know what I mean? I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna put on makeup and I'm gonna smile, and it's gonna be great. You know what I mean? That's what it felt like. We were all coping in different ways. <laughs> And then when you dive into this, because this is fascinating, yeah. um, when you dive into whatever you're doing, whether it's making pasta or, mm-hmm. or camera gear, like where are your go-to sources? Are you scrolling the internet? Are you reaching out to friends, experts? Yeah, I, am, I, I like to toggle between uh, consumer reports dot org. Mm. You sure. know, mm. I've Classic. paid this subscription. Okay, this is just... You got to use it. I could, you listen, gotta I, use it if you I, paid for it. I grew up in a house of two much older brothers, okay, who one works in computers and the other works in like business and they just, this is the influence, you know, it's like, you better look at consumer reports. Like I'm like an old <laughs> fucking uncle, you know what I mean? She's like the youngest consumer reports uh, <laughs> subscriber. They're like, oh my gosh. It's it, Bob, it, look at this. It's usually we got a G- Jenny Yang. Oh yeah. my goodness, look how young she is. And usually it looks like a Bruce Springsteen concert. <laughs> but look at her. Here she is. Here she is. No, look so, at her. So I, I check that out and then I like I Google like reviews and stuff. So yeah. I try not to buy purchase on Amazon anymore, even though it's so convenient because Jeff Bezos is, you know, um Lex Luthor. And so I'm trying to like just like do the research on Amazon, right? Look at the reviews and then maybe go another way. But yeah, that's that's usually what I do. I'm so excited to talk about this first item mm. that you've brought forth to us. Yeah. Um, I, of course, follow you on all social media. Yeah, um, same. You posted about this. I think it broke oh. broke the oh. internet. Oh. And then Suchin yeah. retweeted yeah. it. <laughs> and I heard from her that she's yes. never had so many people reach out to her about anything before. I got two East Asians with me. Let's talk about the eight-piece ear pick ear wax removal kit. It's an ear cleansing tool set. It's a wax remover tool with a cleaning brush and a storage box. Jenny, take it away. (laughs) I mean, but first of all, wait. Let me, before, sorry, I I don't mean to cut you off. Who? I love, first of all, the clarification of East Asians versus non-East Asians. I learned on this podcast that our wax is different. I've looked at Koo and I said, she's she's a sister. We we understand each other. We share things. And now we're aliens in a foreign land. I can barely see her. Our waxes are different. I know it's shocking to both of you, but when you shocking. know you've known me for years now, don't you feel like I'm more of a a wet wax person? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> but I no, think that's it's my dry, vibe. And it's it's dry but and my, it's crackly, just the like the rest my, of us. But my vibe though oh, yeah, is yeah, kind of sure, wet sure, wax. Sure, 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 sure. sure. It's creamy. It's got it's, a nice it's, texture. It's, it's slippery. It's, it's slippery. <laughs> oh my God. So you guys, listen, I grew up East Asian all my life. And <laughs> I, I didn't know that another wax was possible. No. Yeah, sure, sure. I came to America on television, in films, my own boyfriend. Just, com- you know, people, white people were so committed to using Q-tips after they shower. And, and th- that confounded me because I was like, what is wrong with your ears that you felt like jamming a Q-tip in there? It doesn't seem practical because I know my earwax is dry and flaky the way it might be like, you know, uh, like dandruff. You know what mm, I mean? Mm. And so to me, the the sort of fuzzy tip of a Q-tip seemed unnecessary you're just stabbing. Yeah, you're just like packing it in. Yeah, why are you you're packing it dry harder wax? to pull out? Exactly. Yeah. You guys, what you guys are missing on this podcast is both Suchin and Jenny's emphatic space work. <laughs> <laughs> emphatic space just work. Just ear jam. Just imagine like we're jerking <laughs> off our ears. You know what I mean? That's what it I'm looks more, like. I, 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 I like that. I also <laughs> like a it's tiny like a- little penis. <laughs> Like a like a fairy and a, a consenting fairy adult man's penis yeah, into yeah. their ears. Yeah. Listen, yeah. Ugh, it's this is the thing. It was a week ago that I discovered that there was earwax that was different than mine. And it blew my mind. It truly is the first time I realized this because I had no reason to look at a white man's earwax. You know what I'm saying? And and so I just thought everyone was like me. But now mm-hmm, we all know mm-hmm. we live in a pluralistic yeah. society. We need to understand right. that there is diversity. And, I, and that's, uh, that's on me. Okay, that's on me. All right? I made assumptions, but I didn't know mm-hmm. that other people didn't experience the this very intimate, not talked about um, sort of like ritual as a child where I would, you know, lean my head down on my mom's lap and she would grab like a little ear spoon or ear scoop to go inside my ear canal to pick out, right, like dried flaky earwax from the edge of my ear canal. And so I posted about this because it I didn't realize. And so many Asians came out of the woodwork. Mixed race Asians too. They're like, ooh, one ear is dry. The other is wet. Listen, there's a lot going on. Whoa. Wow. I didn't I'm know saying. that. Wow. Okay. But apparently the same gene that makes our earwax drier for East Asians is related to um, how we don't have as much body odor you know, listen. I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of eugenics, but this obviously yeah. is a more evolved part of of our gene pool. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to yeah. throw that out there because wet earwax. Ew. Look, look. When I let myself go and I don't wear deodorant, it's right. Okay. That's right. And so Southeast Asians, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? This is just continues the oppression that East That's Asians right. enact on the rest of Asia. And it's a part of our genetic colonialization, and it's it's sure, it's sure. unfortunate. And I really truly wish we could stop that. But until then, until we've got then. the eight piece. Yeah, it's a kit. We've got the, wait, we got the eight piece earwax pick. Number one, they have um, major grip handles. So that scares me a little bit that that you're doing something so in, physically <laughs> intense that you have to have grip on it, you know, like a power tool. But then also, so tell me how you use this, because you can't do this on yourself. When I, this is happening, somebody else is doing it, right? I, I've lived a lifetime with this earwax. I can do it on myself, just so you know. Wow. Um, how? She's an independent woman. I am, okay. Su Chen. Gosh. Um, I realized, oh, I don't have a full kit like we did when I was younger, which, you know, when I was younger, we had a bamboo one and we had a metal one. And mm. so I was like, this is nice. I love kits. Anytime you get, you have a kit, I love it. Like something with a carrying case, I will always choose that over the other ones. <laughs> so I like this and I like that it has like a little, you know, like um, the way people have a honey and they, on commercials, they drizzle it with like a little yes, honeycomb circular right. thing. So this kit, so this kit has a mini version of that for the wet earwax people. Gross. Right, they have a straight up honey dripper to, for the Ew! for the people, <laughs> and then and then and then they have a, a little nylon bristle brush. Well, I want to know when your parents, when your mom did this for you guys, was this like the only gentle thing that she ever did to you? A hundred percent. Wait, 100%. wait a minute. Hold on a second. Gentle. <laughs> it was not gentle. It was not oh, gentle. It was gentle. Mine for me. always. 
I mean, yes, gentle, right? I think in the grand scheme of things, how I remember it is the same way, only you'd be holding a stick of juicy fruit gum that you could have after my mom was done cleaning. <gasps> oh. And, you, and I just have these memories of just holding the gum, just waiting until oh. she was done picking it so that afterwards, then I could have my treat. I love Ugh. it. I love it. Up next, we have the Human Gear Go Bites Trio Utensil Set. This is from REI. Yep. First of all, it's got a case. So I know Thank Jenny you. likes it. <laughs> I love me a case. I'm a girl on the go. One time Jenny came to my house for a party and you know that she had her own chopsticks <laughs> in a case. In a case. Did, did you notice she this? She pulled I didn't, it out. I, I don't remember this, but you remember this? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's a straight up crowded Hollywood party. I don't give a fuck. Listen, if I was uh, going 100%, I would have brought Tupperware. You know what I mean? I would have been like, <laughs> let me help you out, cool up. I know you're not going to finish this food. These assholes aren't going to eat. They're all on a keto diet. Like, let That's me just... True. Like, That's like, true. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Wait, Jenny, did you bring it because you knew there was going to be food there? Or do you just always have chopsticks in your bag? I almost always have a chopsticks <laughs> in my bag. Why is that funny? Listen, why am I being taunted by my own people about no, the chopsticks? No, it's taunting. No, I'm sorry. I, it, it's delight. a delight. Celebration. Pure delight. It's a celebration. This yes. is why I got it. Listen, I always have chopsticks and I always have that kit. And and recently, my I lost a couple of the utensils from that kit, which is why I need to replace it. It's my way of being eco-friendly and always no, being it's prepared. Smart. You know it's what I mean? Smart. I'm not going to wait until I'm going to like the Hollywood Bowl or at like some kind of picnic in order to have a utensil, you know, fast and ready. If you are ready, you don't have to get ready. And that's how I live. And that's why (laughs) you always have sturdy, non-splintery chopsticks. Okay. And look at this kit. If you look at this kit, it's a carrying case. It's flat packs. Okay. It fits in my purse. You have a spoon and a fork and a knife. And if you look closely, there's a tiny toothpick. If you're Asian, you know the beauty of a toothpick. I'm not out here trying to eat your sinewy meats and not having a toothpick, okay? Okay. You are what we call a first responder to a buffet. <laughs> it, yes. How did you know? That's what you cut out of her bio? Is it you skipped over? At, at fancy parties, I'm 100% hovering at the food. You know what I mean? I don't yeah, care. Yeah. I could I could be in a hot dress. I could be in a tight dress. I'm going to be by the food. And I also love that you specify that it's non-splintery yeah. chopsticks. Yeah. Because we all know what that means. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. they're metal chopsticks or they're plastic chopsticks? They're plastic. Or? They're plastic. Okay. Yep. Uh-huh. That's my preference as well. I was just wondering. I always like to see who is using the metal versus the plastic. I know. Listen, I, I respect Koreans and the Korean culture, but the flat, thin Korean metal no. chopsticks... What are you, are you, are you eating with Legos? Like, that's how it feels. You're eating with Legos. How are you trying to clip up a a little pea? You can't pick up an edamame with that little fucking Mm -hmm. metal Lego Korean chopstick. You got a stab. At that point, it's a skewer. They look like angular skewers. They're very violent looking. Listen, I'm not going to make any assumptions about Korean culture, but you have a lot of Han, okay? A lot, Koreans like to be proud of their fire and- Not surprising, okay, that their main yeah. chopstick is uh, looks like a weapon, okay? <laughs> yeah. No, not, uh, not, nothing surprising there. Absolutely wow. on now, brand. Now the East Asians are turning on one another. <laughs> if anyone yeah. was keeping <laughs> any track. <laughs> it doesn't take about this time. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take no. much. <laughs> no, usually it happens about three quarters in. Yeah, that's right. We're, we're here. We're right on time, right, right on schedule. But here's the thing. Every, anybody who's getting any shade, like, agrees with it, though. And that's the beauty of being Asian. I mean, I can make fun of Chinese people. Don't worry. Oh, we have, sure. We, have we all thick, can. We have thick off. <laughs> we have thick ass plastic ivory looking stubby chopsticks that can't pick anything up. You know what I mean? So why are we even doing that? Up next is something I'm very excited about. Uh, the Ube Extract. It's oh, Ube yeah. Extract by Butterfly. Now, I love... I love anything flavored by Ube. Um, yes. There, there is a L.A. bakery formerly called Frank and Lucy Bake Shop on Sunset, but now it's called, I think, Ube Bebe. Yeah. 
Wait, what's ube? Ooh. Ooh. It's like a purple yam. Oh, yeah. That could be used in many applications. Oh, yeah, purple but a, Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, it could yeah. be used a lot in a, um, a lot of Filipino, Southeast Asian desserts, mostly Filipino I've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love Delish. this extract. I love this extract because I've been getting into like my home barista swag. Oh. I have friends who like do coffee roasting and coffee sales. Like Win uh, Coffee Supply is a good friend of mine, Sarah Win and Nick Cho, who runs Wrecking Ball Roasters. And I'm just obsessed with food and drink people. And so I was like, I'm gonna get into this. I'm gonna like make fancy things. So like, there's like a coconut shaken ube latte you can make with coffee. Okay, you know, that sounds amazing. Yeah, and wow. so. I have an espresso machine, a Breville, and then I use that as a base. You could always spike it with a little of this, uh, you know, um, ube extract that's like slightly sweet. It's like a little bit of a syrup and it just makes everything better. And are you kind of saying ube flavoring in general or do you really like this brand? I do like this brand. I haven't used other brands. There's a McCormick's Mm. brand, but it looks more like essence rather than a syrup. And so I like that this has a little bit of sweetness because you can, you know, just do that and you don't have to add tons of stuff. But, you know, other people like things that are more sweet. I like this hint of sweetness. I'm the same. I'm the Mm -hmm. same. And ube, ube for those that don't know the purple potato the the sort of Asian palate sweetness is so different than a Western sweetness, right? Like yes. when you go into an Asian dessert place, a potato is sweet. Yeah, hundred <laughs> you know percent. I mean? Whereas the, that's a dessert. It is. Yeah, and there's <laughs> as you, there's usually like a, a like a little bit of bitterness as well. Yeah. Yep. All the green tea, the matcha desserts, right? Yep. We like a balance for sure. Yeah, I feel like you know I have once cried when my uncle in Taiwan um, gave me a plate of cut up tropical fruit. Like I have literally shed a tear because it was so beautiful. The star fruit, passion fruit, yes. dragon fruit, guava, mm. you know Ooh. what I mean? Mango. I, I feel like for a lot of Asians, fruit is dessert. Yeah, absolutely. Which is just so weird to Western folks. You know what I mean? They're like fruit. Oh, you mean with like sh- more sugar crumbles and, you know, pastry? No, just fruit. Just fruit is fine. And if for those of you keeping score, we've turned on the white people once again. <laughs> we have united. It was over sugar we levels. <laughs> I Thank mean, you. no, it really is. Need we needed to point it out. We're here again. We're here together. We're here together. I was an assistant for a sitcom as one of my first jobs in entertainment, and it was like all white people, all the assistants, and I brought a red bean bun. Yum. to work. And I was like, hey guys, you guys want to try this red bean bun? It's really good. And then one of the one of the guys who's like a snotty kid of a like a legendary direct TV director, he's all quiet and he just goes, nobody wants your bean bread. I was like, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Jesus! Violent much? Oh my God, the violence. Damn. Like, the, it's not Damn. even microaggression, it's a macroaggression at that point. <laughs> Nobody wants your bean bread. It's like, not full, okay, Asians, we be loving beans as a dessert. Calm down, back up. Red beans, mung beans. Yes, green <laughs> You're beans. You're wrong. <laughs> See, I still hold it in my heart. Still salty about it. Well, that man, you know, he needs, we need to deliver some bean bread to yeah. his house is what he needs. Yeah, he just yeah. hasn't had Yeah, Jason Reitman. <laughs> no? Are you now predicting no. who he the just, kid is? is he, a, he's going to stab in the dark. Go ahead. Is Max Landis? <laughs> I hope none of this gets cut. None of, not one second of this. Get, I don't know who these people are. But I get it. Wow, Kulap's out here naming names now. I get it. I get it. Stirring up shit. Stirring up shit. Stirring up I'm shit not naming my, my peanut butter wax ears. <laughs> Stirring up that some thick metal shit. honeycomb honeycomb stir with the hand uh-huh. grip. Just just uh-huh. like East Asians, just allowing the Southeast Asian to go do this dirty work, man. Just fucking <laughs> stirring up the shit. And here we are. Here we are. Back again. <laughs> Turning on each other. And the wheels of time, they move on. Time is circular, Suchin, okay? That's right. Oh, That's right. Oh, my goodness. Jenny, I could talk to you forever. Um, Same. You're the best. Um, please tell our listeners where they can find you on the internet. Oh, um, at Jenny Yang TV on Instagram or Twitter. I'm always on, you know, <laughs> trying to... Avoid life. It's the best entertainment. It's it's infotainment. It is. It's both informative 
It's entertaining. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I I don't come up with this stuff. I only just repost everything you do, and <laughs> and all of the the leftover juices. You know yeah. what I mean? They flow into my uh, my account, and wow. I I welcome it with open well, open arms. Um, leftover Jenny Yang juice is all I ever hope for. So I really appreciate it. This this has gotten sexier <laughs> than I thought it would. This is very <laughs> sexy. This podcast. Who knew? Add to cart. Very sexy. That's a wrap. That's you know what I mean? Wrap. That's a wrap. We went bathing suits and fish sauce bombs. I mean, mm-hmm. come on. This is the summer yes. that I'm talking about. Yes, pour some alcohol into your shotgun for Apple Spotlight and Apple Podcast for so much amazing work highlighting our show. Thank you, guys. Um, and you all continue to highlight our show, please. Um, keep those ratings and reviews and subscribes coming. Um, thank you so much for that. And if you still want to listen, we'll be here next week. We ain't going nowhere. You can follow us on Apple Podcasts or any other podcast listening apps, and and we'll be we'll be there. I promise. To find all of our lovely Add to Carts, find us on Instagram always at Add to Cart Pod. Leave us a voicemail. Tell us what you'd want to have shot into your mouth at 833-453-6662. Extra points if you story it and tag at Add to Cart Pod. We'll share it. It's quite an invitation there. All right. We will be back next week, everyone. Thank you. Add to Cart is a production of Lemonada Media. Our producer is Claire Jones, and our editor is Ivan Kirev. The music is by Wasabi and produced by LA Made It, and oh so familiar with additional music by APM Music. Executive producers are Kulap Vlysak, Sujin Pak, Jessica Cordova Kramer, and Stephanie Whittles Wax. Be sure to check out all the items we mentioned today on our Instagram at Add to Cart Pod. Also, please take a moment to rate, review, and subscribe to this show wherever you get your podcasts.